she was a professional. She was beautiful. She wanted so badly to be a good actress. Heather O'Rourke, a promising child star who captured the hearts of audiences with her incredible talent and intelligence, tragically ended her life in 1988 at the age of 12. This, along with disturbing stories about the dark side of Hollywood, has sparked countless theories and rumors. Now Henry Winkler confirms what happened to Heather O'Rourke. What was the mystery behind Heather's passing? Discover the truth and untold secrets behind her controversial death in this video. And now let's start with her soothing poetic stories. Heather Michelle O'Rourke was born in San Diego, California on December 27, 1975, into a working-class family. Her parents, Kathleen and Michael O'Rourke, worked hard to raise their two daughters. Kathleen was a talented seamstress, while Michael was a carpenter. Heather had an older sister named Tammy, who began acting and inspired her younger sister greatly. The family lived in a trailer park in Anaheim, where living conditions were modest but always maintained an optimistic spirit. It was in this environment that Heather's natural talent and beauty became a bright light, helping her overcome everything. Heather's career changed forever when she was five years old, when Steven Spielberg, one of Hollywood's most famous directors, happened to see her at an MGM grocery store. Heather was having lunch with her mother while her sister Tammy was filming Pennies from Heaven. Spielberg, looking for the perfect face to play Carol Ann Freeling in the upcoming horror film Poltergeist, was immediately drawn to Heather's calm and angelic appearance. When Spielberg asked if she could read, Heather said emphatically, Yes, I can read very well. This impressed him even more and he decided to audition for Heather. She beat out dozens of other candidates for the iconic role. Her role as Carol Ann in Poltergeist 1982 instantly made Heather a child star. Her famous line, They're Here, was not only a highlight of the film, but also an unforgettable part of popular culture. Heather brought a wonderful balance between childlike innocence and the deep fear that the role required. The film was a huge success, not only commercially, but also critically, paving the way for Heather to appear in two sequels in the series. Beyond Poltergeist, Heather demonstrated her versatility through several popular television projects. She appeared in Chips, Webster, and the new Leave it to Beaver, and made her mark as Heather Fister on Happy Days where she played the daughter of Linda Pearl's lover, Fonzie. Henry Winkler, who plays Fonzie, is not only a co-worker, but also becomes a mentor and close friend to Heather in the harsh entertainment industry. Despite her early fame, Heather has maintained an incredible balance between her work and personal life. She attended Big Bear Elementary School and did not consider her education a secondary priority. Heather was once class president, a testament to her intelligence, responsibility, and leadership skills. Unlike many other child stars, she has always maintained a simple and sincere personality, always putting family and friends first. Heather has shared that, in addition to acting, she dreams of becoming a writer or director, aspiring to create her own stories. She enjoys painting, writing, and enjoying life with her family in their new home in Big Bear Lake, where they moved, thanks to her career income. Heather loves nature and often spends time by the lake, which she feels helps her recharge amid her work. Despite her promising career, Heather's health began to show signs of instability in late 1987. She often suffered from abdominal pain and fatigue, but the initial symptoms were not accurately diagnosed. On February 1, 1988, Heather suddenly fell into critical condition when she went into septic shock due to an undetected congenital intestinal stenosis. Despite timely emergency treatment, she did not survive, leaving behind endless grief for her family, 
friends, and millions of fans. What happened? Heather O'Rourke died on February 1, 1988, just weeks after her 12th birthday, leaving her family, friends, and fans devastated. She had been diagnosed with Crohn's disease, a chronic inflammatory condition of the intestines, in 1987. However, this diagnosis was later found to be incorrect. Heather had a rarer condition, congenital intestinal atresia, a defect in which the intestines are abnormally narrowed from birth, causing a blockage. This condition went undetected for years, leading to serious complications. Heather's last days were a series of terrifying events. She suddenly developed severe abdominal pain, prompting her parents to rush her to the hospital. When they arrived, Heather was in critical condition, suffering from septic shock, a serious complication in which an infection spreads throughout the body and causes multiple organ failure. Doctors attempted to stabilize her and performed emergency surgery to remove the blockage. However, Heather did not survive and died that afternoon. Heather's mother, Kathleen O'Rourke, was devastated. Not only was the loss of a mother unbearable for Kathleen, but she was also tormented by the thought that her daughter's death could have been avoided if the medical team had been more vigilant. She felt that Heather's health signs had been overlooked or misunderstood for a long time. Heather had suffered from persistent abdominal pain and unusual digestive symptoms. Every time she took her to the doctor, Kathleen hoped to find the real cause. Instead, she was misdiagnosed with Crohn's disease, a chronic inflammatory condition of the intestines that is not uncommon, especially in children. Kathleen believed in this diagnosis and tried everything she could to treat her daughter, including changing her diet and using strong anti-inflammatory drugs. Unfortunately, none of these treatments were truly effective because the real cause, congenital intestinal stenosis, was not discovered. After Heather's death, Kathleen was hit with even more heartache when she heard the medical reports from the hospital. The autopsy revealed that Heather had congenital intestinal atresia, a rare condition that is completely treatable if diagnosed early. She began to learn more about the condition and discovered that it is often diagnosed in infancy. If doctors had recognized the danger signs earlier, such as severe abdominal pain, indigestion, or bowel obstruction, Heather might have had a better chance of survival. Kathleen realized that there might have been negligence in her medical care. She began to collect medical records, consulted with medical experts, and decided to file a lawsuit against the hospital where Heather was treated. In her lawsuit, she accused the medical team of failing to do their job properly, especially in ignoring Heather's obvious signs of illness during her many previous visits. Kathleen decided to go public with her decision to sue the hospital, which quickly attracted a great deal of media attention. Heather's death, which had already shocked the public, now raised questions about medical liability and patient rights. Many newspapers ran headlines emphasizing that this could be a case of wrongful death due to medical negligence. Discussions about medical misdiagnosis also became more heated, especially when it came to children who are unable to adequately express their symptoms. Kathleen gave several interviews, sharing her grief and her determination to seek justice for her daughter. The legal battle was not an easy one. Representatives of the hospital defended the medical team, arguing that they had followed the correct procedures given the information available at the time. They argued that Heather's condition was extremely rare and difficult to diagnose, especially since the symptoms could easily be mistaken for other conditions. However, Kathleen's side, backed by lawyers and medical experts, argued that there were ample opportunities to detect Heather's condition before it was too late. 
She presented evidence that typical signs of the condition were missed and questioned whether negligence or negligence on the part of the doctors led to her daughter's death. After months of tense negotiations, the case was settled out of court. According to sources, the hospital agreed to pay Heather's family a financial settlement. While the amount was not made public, many believe it was a significant sum, partly to protect the hospital's reputation. Following Heather O'Rourke's death, the public continued to be shocked by the strange and tragic events that happened to other actors in the Poltergeist series. Many fans and admirers believe that the famous horror series was covered by a harsh supernatural curse leading to tragic deaths and accidents for the participants. Heather was not the only member of the cast to face a tragic fate. Dominique Dunn, who played her sister, Dana Freeling, in the first Poltergeist film, became the victim of a haunting murder. In 1982, just months after the film's release, Dominique was brutally murdered by her ex-boyfriend, John Sweeney, outside her home. John strangled Dominique in a fit of jealousy, causing her to fall into a coma and die shortly after. The case shocked the public, not only because of its brutality, but also because Dominique's image remained fresh in the minds of fans of the film. Tragedy continued to plague the cast of the sequel, Poltergeist 2, The Other Side. Julian Beck, who played the terrifying villain Kane, died of stomach cancer in 1985, just months after completing his role. Julian was known as a talented and dedicated actor, but the terrible disease prevented him from participating in other projects. His passing was considered a great shock because his appearance on screen as Kane had just made a deep impression on the audience. In 1987, Will Sampson, who played the shaman Taylor in the second installment, also passed away after a failed heart transplant. Will, not only an actor, but also a Native American who was a voice in his community, had faced many health problems before. However, his death shortly after his role in Poltergeist II further fueled speculation about a curse haunting the film. The story of the poltergeist curse comes not only from the tragic deaths, but also from the creepy behind-the-scenes elements. One of the most controversial details is that the filmmakers used real human skeletons as props for the scene in the first part. According to Jo Beth Williams, the main actress, these skeletons were used in the swimming pool scene because they were cheaper than creating artificial skeletons. Later, many people believed that using real skeletons unintentionally brought bad luck as an insult to the spiritual world. Other mysterious stories were also passed down by word of mouth. During the filming, many actors and crew members recounted unexplained incidents, such as equipment suddenly stopping working, furniture moving on its own, and unusual creepy feelings on set. These events further made the poltergeist curse an urban legend, endlessly discussed by horror fans. However, amid the wave of speculation, Heather O'Rourke's family has repeatedly denied any supernatural elements involved in her death. According to them, Heather's passing was not the result of a curse or a haunting from movie props, but simply a serious medical tragedy. However, Heather's family cannot avoid being caught up in the rumors and media attention. For them, the stories surrounding the poltergeist curse have somewhat overshadowed the real pain they have suffered. Kathleen O'Rourke, Heather's mother, once shared that the association of her daughter's death with supernatural elements hurt high because it made people forget the medical errors that led to her passing. In 1988, months after the tragic passing of Heather O'Rourke, actor Henry Winkler, best known for his iconic role as Fonzie on Happy Days, made some comments in an interview. Although he did not directly mention Heather, Winkler's comments were strong enough to spark much speculation. 
During the interview, Winkler spoke candidly about the Hollywood environment, especially the pressures faced by child actors. He stressed that the industry often places high expectations on children, while also pointing out the hidden dangers that few people realize. He described it as a place of temptation, with many people willing to exploit the innocence of young children for personal or financial gain. Although Winkler did not directly refer to any specific incidents involving Heather, his insinuating tone sparked a wave of controversy. The public immediately linked these comments to Heather's death, wondering whether the young actress may have suffered any abuse or exploitation before her death. The questions were further fueled as the media delved deeper into Winkler's working relationship with Heather on the set of Happy Days. Some reports suggested that Winkler may have known more than he was letting on. At the time, Hollywood was facing a series of allegations of misconduct involving child actors. Scandals like the Roman Polanski affair and revelations about harsh working conditions had brought the industry under intense scrutiny. Winkler's suggestive comments were therefore in the spotlight, sparking a debate about the safety and rights of child actors. Despite the media attention, Winkler did not provide any further information. He declined to comment further on the matter, leaving the public to speculate about his true intentions. In the late 1980s, Hollywood began to face several scandals involving child actors. Some prominent cases, such as those of Corey Feldman and Corey Heim, two child stars of the 1980s, shocked the public. Both later publicly denounced that they had been treated unfairly during their time in Hollywood, leading to serious psychological consequences. In that context, Winkler's statements attracted even more public attention. Many began to question whether Heather O'Rourke, a talented and popular girl from a very young age, might have become a victim of a system that lacked protection and supervision for children. Heather began her career at the age of five, appearing in Happy Days, and quickly became a child star in the Poltergeist series. Working in a harsh environment, combined with the pressure of reputation, always poses risks to children's mental and emotional development. Despite Winkler's insinuations, no concrete evidence has been presented to prove that Heather was a victim of misconduct. Her family, especially her mother Kathleen O'Rourke, has always maintained that Heather was well protected throughout her career. Kathleen has said, that she was always on set to supervise her daughter and did not notice any unusual behavior from her co-stars or the film crew. However, this denial has not eased the public debate. With the rise of the Your Me Too movement decades later, there has been a growing understanding of how powerful people in the entertainment industry can go to great lengths to conceal misconduct. This has left some skeptical that there may be more truths about what happened behind the scenes in Heather's short life that have yet to be revealed. Although Henry Winkler never provided further information or clarified his initial comments, his statements created a stir. Many fans of the Poltergeist series and researchers of the dark side of Hollywood began to speculate about what might have happened to Heather O'Rourke. The implications of Winkler's words sparked discussions around the issue of child exploitation in the entertainment industry, a long-standing problem that has often been glossed over by the glamour of Hollywood. Heather's family, however, took a completely different stance. In the years since her death, they have consistently denied any suggestion that Heather was abused or exploited. Her mother, Kathleen O'Rourke, insisted that she was always present on set to supervise and protect her daughter. Heather's sister, Tammy, has also repeatedly stated that Heather was a happy child who loved acting and felt comfortable working in the industry. Tammy recalls that Heather would often come home with interesting stories from the set and was always eager to take on new projects. 
The family's strong defense has led many to question, if Heather was truly not in any danger, why would Winkler make such comments? Some have suggested that Winkler may have been referring to the general dangers faced by child actors in the industry rather than specifically targeting Heather. However, his subsequent silence has only added to the mystery surrounding his initial comments. In 2023, Heather O'Rourke, She Was Here, a documentary directed by Nick Bailey, was officially released. The film is billed as an intimate and moving portrait of Heather's short but meaningful life. The film not only chronicles her journey from a normal girl to a famous child star, but also focuses on the human side and the family values that Heather always held dear. In the documentary, Interviews with those closest to Heather, including her mother Kathleen, her sister Tammy, and famous co-stars Craig T. Nelson and Joe Beth Williams, provide emotional perspectives. Those close to Heather share many warm memories of her, from adorable moments on set to the simple joys of playing at home. Tammy recalls her sister's smile, which she said lit up the whole room. In addition to reenacting Heather's life, she was here is also seen as an attempt to dispel the persistent rumors surrounding her death. The film focuses on the facts, emphasizing that Heather was a victim of medical errors, not any paranormal or abusive behavior. Her mother Kathleen emotionally shares in one scene that her goal is to clear up misconceptions and to remember Heather as a talented, fun-loving, and joyful girl. The documentary also does not shy away from discussing the challenges that child actors often face. It makes a strong case for protecting children in the entertainment industry, emphasizing that Heather's story while not related to exploitation, is a reminder of the risks that families need to be aware of. The tributes in She Was Here come not only from Heather's family and friends, but also from the millions of fans around the world who followed her short but inspiring journey. The documentary ends with a touching message. Heather O'Rourke left us too soon but her light will forever shine through the beautiful memories and love she left behind. Heather O'Rourke, despite her death at the age of 12, left a significant legacy not only in the entertainment industry, but also in the hearts of those who loved her. Her short but brilliant career was not only associated with classic roles, but also became an icon of talent and innocence in 1980s Hollywood. Heather is best known for her role as Carol Ann Freeling in the horror film series Poltergeist. With her innocent looks, bright smile, and acting ability beyond her real age, she left a deep impression on the audience. Her classic line in the film, They're Here, is not only a highlight of the film, but also became a pop culture icon associated with the horror film genre. Not only was she a star on the screen, Heather also represented the image of young talent in Hollywood. She embodied the innocence and passion for art, which many child actors at that time could hardly match. Every time she appeared, Heather shone with sincerity and professional work spirit, which inspired not only those in the industry, but also audiences everywhere. After her death, her family and fans always tried to keep Heather's memory alive. In 2023, the documentary Heather O'Rourke, She Was Here, was released to honor her life and career. The film brings an intimate, touching look at Heather's life through the stories of her family, friends, and co-stars, emphasizing her artistic contributions as well as her precious innocence. Heather left her mark not only through her roles, but also through her optimism, strength in the face of adversity, and love for her work. Her legacy is a reminder of the value of talent and dedication as well as an enduring symbol of light and hope in a challenging industry. And now, 
What do you think about the tragic story of Heather O'Rourke? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next video.